The passage reading from the which we seek God's grace comes from Philippines chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. Have this attitude in yourself that was alone in Christ Jesus, who, although he exists in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but empty himself of taking the form of the bond servant and the being made in a likeness of a man. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. And anthem by the Nisi Choir, accompanied by the Nisi Orchestra, is next. Senior Pastor will deliver the passage title The Lord is Christ. Loving brothers and sisters in Christ, members of a branch church and their local sanctuaries, uh, not like any other weeks of the years, this week is that you are more deeply grateful for the grace and the love of our God. Last Sunday morning, I delivered the first part of the message, The Lord is Christ. I explained what our Jesus went through to become the Christ. Tonight, in this second part of the message, the Lord is Christ, I will tell you what kind of attitude Jesus had to become the Christ. I hope that you can understand the heart of the Lord all the more clearly. Last time, due to lack of time, I stopped in the middle of the message, so I will continue to preach it and deliver the second session. I will deliver the rest of the first session, and then I will deliver the second session of the message. Last Sunday, I explained the meaning of the Christ and the meaning that containing the suffering about Jesus. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 says, The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. A sinner's life can be neither peaceful nor prosperous. Those who commit the sin become the prey of an enemy devil and the Satan according to the law of the spiritual lamb. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 14, God said the serpent to Satan who instigated the serpent, thus you will eat all the days of your life. Here, thus it refers to man of the flesh who commit the sin. The enemy devil and the Satan bring about all kinds of tests and the trials to those who live in sin. But those who have accepted the Lord as a, sa a Savior and live life free of the sins will not suffer from poverty, disease, and, or accident brought by Satan. Because Jesus resolved the problem of our sins by subjecting himself to the punishment. The reason Jesus was born in Shabbat's stable and lived a life in the poverty was to redeem the mankind from their poverty. Also, even if one is already diseased or infirm, if he repent his sins from his heart and tears down the wall of the sin, he can be healed. The scripture says that by his scourging we are healed. As we find in Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, this was to fulfill what was spoken through the Isaiah the prophet. He himself took our inf infirmities and carried away our diseases. We are healed because Jesus was a scourge and his body was hurt. We have been redeemed from our sin because our Lord shed His blood for us. Because He was scourged and shed His blood, our Lord has redeemed us from all our sins. 
The scourge at the time was a deadly weapon that had pieces of lead or bones at the edge. And a well-training Roman soldier scorched, scorched Jesus. His flesh tore away from the body by their weeping. Brothers and sisters in Christ and GCN viewers, when he was carrying out his ministry in the frazzled human form, Jesus endured hunger and tiredness and bore with a fearful scourging large nails and the pain of the thorn. Was it easy for him to endure because he is the Son of God? Far from it, Jesus overcame all this suffering by the power of love. His utmost love for mankind enabled him to bear with all of the pains and the sufferings. This love saved us cursed as sinners who were like the corpse from the unquenchable fire of hell. Therefore, I hope none of you will say, I cannot believe in the love of the Lord. I cannot feel it. The birth, life, and the death of our, our Lord are all historical facts and events. The calendars you have at the home bear witness to this historical fact. What year does your calendar say? The time before the birth of our Lord is marked as B.C. and the time after His birth is A.D. Timeline is divided by the B.C. and A.D. So, just when looking at the calendar, you can tell how many years ago our Lord was born to redeem us from our sin. It's been a recorded in calendars. You are breathing after gaining a new life, and you are commemorating the love of the Lord on the cross. All thanks to the love of the Lord, we can do everything with the power of this love. The hearts that are stained with the sin, so they look like scarlet, can become clean like a white snow. So, I hope all of you quickly become as man of the Spirit and the whole Spirit to you are sanctified. I pray that in the name of our Lord in Christ who suffered that you may give joy and comfort to the Father God who has given His only begotten Son. I explained what our Jesus went through in order to become the Christ. In the second part of the message, the Lord is the Christ, I will tell you the kind of attitude Jesus had to become the Christ. I hope you understand the heart of the Lord all the more clearly. Brothers and sisters in Christ, to become the Christ, what kind of attitude did Jesus have? First, he had an attitude of nothing but obedience. He was willing to do whatever God the Father might wish. What was God's plan for Jesus? It was to send Jesus to this fleshly world and make him be sacrificed. sacrificed for a sinner. That means the sinless Jesus had to receive a terrible uh, punishment that only Fallon had to do. He was to hang on word, a symbol of the curse, shed his blood and die. Jesus knew that he would have, uh, have to go through all this when he obeyed the will of Father God, but still he said, Amen. It was just as 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19 says, For the Son of God, Christ Jesus, was not yes and no, but is yes in Him. He didn't say, Father, I cannot do that. Why does it have to be me? Why must I do this? He didn't look for a way around it. Nor did He ask a Father, Is this the only way and the sick and easier way out? Only with Amen he obeyed. From the perspectives of 
justice and love. Jesus had a clear understanding of the reason why God the Father was sending him to the earth. That's in order to be ready in mankind from the sin once and for all, there must be a blood shedding of a sinless man. It is because the Leviticus uh, chapter 17 verse 11 says, For it is blood by reason of the life that makes atonement. I want to say it, blood is equal with life. Only the blood of a sinless person can redeem us from our sin. For the reason our Lord had to shed His blood. All mankind is Adam's descendants and all are born with the original sin. No matter how good and righteous a man is, he cannot redeem mankind from sin. Therefore, the Son of God had to come to the earth in human form. To be born as a man, he had to borrow Virgin Maria's body and be conceived by the Holy Spirit. I say it again, our Lord was conceived by the Holy Spirit because He was to be born without the original sin. Our Jesus knew about the law of the justice very well. He also knew God the Father's love for souls who were sinners as well. Just as uh, Jesus sympathized with the burning love of a Father who wished to lead the soul of the salvation even through the sacrificing everything, and that Jesus could willingly obey the will of God the Father. He was never forced to obey. He knew and was one with God and the Father in heart. That is why he desired to accomplish the God will. The work of completing salvation for sinner is not only God the Father's work, but also His. In one heart and with one will, He wished to accomplish the providence of a human salvation. That's why He could be obedient in everything. As you accomplish the works of a God's kingdom, you will naturally obey the will of God if you have the Lord heart. Whatever we do, such as serving others, loving others, we should have a Lord heart that is one with Father's God. Then you must, uh, you must first understand the good will of the God contained in His commandments, and you should have considered the work of God as the Father kingdom to your own. If you are ready like this, you can obey it no matter what it is. On the contrary, those who say that it is the Father's work, I need to do that, will fail to obey the God's will, even though it is a deed of the goodness. Without doubt, I have obeyed the will of God so far. Even if it has seemed impossible to do or to understand, I only said Amen. So, in any case, once I said Amen, then I could re realize why Father God wanted to be, uh, wanted me to do it, and He's a good will. I sometimes never understand why Father God let me do it, but I just obey what He said. The first is saying Amen. I will never pray to help me understand. He's helped me understand why He let me do it later. In addition, as I obeyed and took each step forward, the way was shown like a fog wave fading away. In the end, I have been able to harvest abundant fruits and give the glory of God, glory to God. This is one of the compliments He pays me. Realistically, God seems to. Uh, put me into a difficult situation on purpose, but I only search for the good will of God, though. At any moment of the training, I've, uh, I even understand the depths of the Father's heart. By faith, I hoped God would give me a great blessing and glory, uh, blessing after the training, and I just obeyed in silence. This is kind of obedience with the Father God's please. With this kind of obedience, our Jesus could become the Christ. 
I urge you to become a ple pleasure to God the Father with this kind of obedience. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in order to become the Christ, secondly, Jesus was willing to sacrifice and devote himself. Sacrifice refers to an act of the giving up one's life, fortune, honor, or something important or valuable for the sake of others. Devotion is spending all of the time or energy on an active activity. To accomplish the providence of a salvation of a cross that God the Father had planned before each, He devoted Himself. He had no desire to seek His own benefit. He completed the way of a salvation of the cross with an attitude of a taking any harm, no matter what it would be. As a result, the wall of the sin between sinners and God was demolished. It is just uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 16 says that he might reconcile them both one body to God through the cross by it having put the fast amity. To reconcile the sinners to God, Jesus himself became the atoning sacrifice and he gave us the duty of the reconciliation. On this 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 says, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of the reconciliation. In order to carry out this duty of the reconciliation, we should have also sacrificed and devoted ourselves just like the Lord did. We should not expect to pursue peace with all men without sacrificing ourselves. Especially if you wish to become a servant of God or a worker, you must be ready to devote yourself. Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, verse 26 to 27, If anyone come to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Therefore, you must never do things to break peace with God from now on. When you come in sin, the wall of the sin separates you from God and the peace is broken. A sin leading to death builds a wall that can never be broken. You know that what is the truth, what is the heaven and hell, you know there is the judgment, so you should never commit such a sin leading to death, never. If you are peaceful with God, you can conf confidently ask God whatever you, you, we, you, you wish, and you can receive answers to whatever you ask. Moreover, if you pursue peace with all men, you will become a true child of a God. If you become a true child of a God, you will take a different level of a spiritual authority from heaven. Just as our Lord, just as our Lord manifested the um, power of a God as a son of a God, you can also become a man of ability. But you should remember only when you sacrifice yourself just as Jesus did, you can make the peace not only with God, but also with all men. To become the Christ of Jesus, feel that He's hurt only with love. I said that He had the attitude of obedience and He was willing to sacrifice Himself to become the Christ. Our Jesus could do all this because He was full of love in His heart. To become the Savior for sinner, He was able to obey even to the point of His death. He existed in the form of God, but 
emptied himself, took the form of a servant, and sacrificed himself completely. All was possible for him because his heart was full of love for God, the Father, and the souls. If you love God, from the depth of your heart, you will desire to obey God's will. You won't say, do I have to do this? You will not avoid His will either. You won't say, I don't want to do it or why should it to be me? You won't try to disobey either. You will say only yes and amen. The power, of God, uh, the power of love is so great that it can turn the impossible into possible. Psalm of Sol Solomon, chapter 8, verse, uh, the, next, the next verse, says many words cannot quench love nor will rivers overflow it. If a man were to give all the riches of his house for love, it would be utterly despised. Our Jesus could obey the will of God to the point of the dying for sinner. It was also thanks to the power of love. The love that Jesus had far surpassed the fear and the pain of the suffering on the cross. It was just as a 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 says, There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. If you love God, you will have no fear. Whatever you do for God in the face, you will have no fear. You will have confidence in everything. For the same reason, God the Father was able to give His beloved Son over to suffer or terrible death. His love for souls was far greater than the pain He received as He watched His Son suffering. On this, 1 John chapter 4, verse 10 says, In this In this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the p r o p i t a t i o n s for our sin. It's not that we love God first, but that God loved us first in order to redeem us from our sin. God sent His only begotten Son as a p r o p i t a t i o n So, so that's why we say that God is love. If you believe in the love of such a God the Father and it depends on the Lord from the depths of your heart, you can surely overcome any difficulties or suffering. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 says, Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or perse persecution or the famine or nakedness or peril or s w o r And the Roman. I myself underwent so many refinement of a blessing over 30 years in ministry, and I could overcome all of them by power of love. When I was known to the whole world as a bad person due to first broadcasting, I overcame it only by faith and the fact that the Father loves me. Even if all men were pointing their fingers at me, the fact that the Father knows the truth and He loves me comforted me. I've never doubted or forgotten that God loves and trusts me 100%. I love and trust God 100%. My love and trust in Him have never gone down to under the 100. And I know that the Father is the same with me since I have never broken any of the Father's commitments. I can always be confident. 
Because I have always been obedient, I'm confident before the Father. After this time of the refinement, the tremendous blessing is given to us because I know this fact. I've, you, uh, I know this fact. And I said, it was blessing. What happened after all? After the third trial ended, God blessed us to conduct the 2000s Uganda crusade and kept the blessing so until now. After a com- overcoming all the trials with the thanks great and the huge blessing have come up to the Israel crusade. I hope that you love God the Father all the more and you are loved by God the Father. With that power of love, you can conquer the world. Even after you turn into the spread and the whole spread, you may receive the persecution. It is the case when you are persecuted for the sake of the Lord's name. When Joseph was sold into the slavery and the warning of wrongfully in prison, what does the Bible say of the, his situation? Someone might tell you that Joseph's life, life was ruined, but God's word says he was prosperous. What happened in the end? Was he prosperous or not? Joseph ended up there receiving the abundant blessing, and eventually he saved his father, brothers, and the whole nation. People say only what they see overlooking the progress the father works on. Each case is different. The Apostle Paul did die a martyr. He was in prison. Peter did go to jail. Does it mean their lives was a failure? No. All that had happened to them ended up being a blessing. They magnified God even more. You, uh, you to know these things also. It's not that people of the whole spirit aren't involved in the jail or martyrdom. In order to give the greater glory to God in the Father's providence and the will, may different things can happen. It is case when you are persecu- uh, persecuted for sake of the Lord's name. Even facing such uh, persecutions, those who truly love God from their hearts can easily conquer it. They will rather rejoice and be glad. It's because the Lord said that your reward in heaven is great. Your reward is great. The four fathers of a faith who fervently love the Lord rejoiced and were glad to be persecuted for the sake of the Lord. But if you feel tough to life, uh, tough to live following Jesus Christ, can you say you truly love the Lord? The Lord sacrificed everything for you. How dare you don't love the Lord? If you love Him, you will obey Him. If you love Him, you can sacrifice yourself. Let me conclude the message. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we read in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, have this attitude in yourselves which was alone in Christ. Christ Jesus. Have this attitude. What attitude? The heart of Jesus. If you have the attitude and the heart of Jesus in you, how could any evil be instigated in your heart? Could you even allow such things to settle in your heart? You must not allow it. Surely the Holy Spirit has made a sanctuary in your heart if you make your heart unclean. There's no salvation for you. The Bible says, God showed me the great judgment in 1982. God's great judgment. It was at the time of our church opening in the 19th 1982, I think God showed me a great white throne judgment, and it was very solemn and awe-inspiring. It's such a solemn atmosphere that you can hear even if a needle falls. Father God is sitting there as a judge, and our Lord is defending. Moses judges by the law of Moses. There are two 24 elders sitting on the jury. It's very seldom. Now those who are not recorded in the Book of Life are called out one by one and judged. 
Your name is recorded in the book of the life in the heaven on the day you accept Jesus as a Savior and receive the Holy Spirit. Those who have been recorded but committed a sin later and left God go to death. Also, those who are liars, living in the darkness and not living in the world come to the judgment one by one. How solemn the judgment is. I will never commit such a sin. I never said that telling a lie like this doesn't work. In front of the Father's throne, there is a glass sea where you can look into the everything our souls did in the past on the earth. So everything revealed through that the glass sea. So you can even make an excuse. You have to live as a Christian. The Lord is pleased to so that we don't get called to judgment of a punishment. I explained the three attitudes our Jesus had in him to become the Christ. It's nothing but obedience, the willing attitude of a sacrifice and the devotion and the love for the fathers and the soul. I hope you can feel how hurt of the Lord is. I hope you engrave the heart of the Lord. May you never forget the grace and the love of the God, Father, and pursue only the way of the truth until the Lord come back. The name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, I pray. Let us think over the message and pray together. As we receive the senior pastor's prayer for the sick by the video, place your hands on the ill or weak parts of your body, and if you are not sick, place your hands on your chest in order to receive by the face. Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father. Please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works of the transcend the time and the space on those who are receiving the prayer through the GCN internet and the satellite TV in branch churches and the local sanctuaries and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from the heart. Drive away negative thought and the doubts and the drive away the old test and the trial. From the head to toe, all in trail, the joint, the nerves, tissues, and the cells, whatever the sick part might, may be. Burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs, and the viruses and the infirmities, go away. Light come. Please scorch all their terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All infectious diseases, including cold, flu, and the fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them all of the stomach, lung, liver, breast, uh, urine, and intent. Intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high and low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problem, and the heart, lung, and the women's disease, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of a polio stroke, arthritis, and the heart related the disc, back pain, headache. Neurologia and all of the pains disappear. All kinds of paralysis be loosened. Get up, walk, and leap. Let the eyes see well and the, let the ears hear well. Let the blind come to see and the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Heal them of after effect of all kinds of accident. Fix their broken bones. 
restore them from the burn, let the heat and the burning sensation go away. Father, please have all skin in intact. Be cleaned from the all kinds of drug addiction, poison, and the substance abuse. Let the dead nerves, the tissues, and the cells the regenerated bring the death back to life. Give them the blessing of the conception, so receive the blessing of the conception. In the name of the Jesus Christ, I command that enemy devils and Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, of the evil forces of the heavenly places, and their servants, go away. Go away, evil, clean force, and the deceitfully spreads of something uh, alienating, and all forces darkness. Father God, give them a strength to cry out the prey in the power of the cast of a sin and become a sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them and let their families be evangelized. Protect them from the all kinds of accidents and the disasters through this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problem. With the fury war of the Holy Spirit, the heavenly hosts and the angels, and with their blazing eyes, t h e practice all their children, their families, and the workplace, and the business field. Please let students have a wisdom and the smartness and have them be willing to study with the Father. Please do not let them lose their heart to worldly things and let them love God more fervently. Let them be the testify about the living God, saying, I've met and experienced God and have received His answers and the blessing. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen. それは命与える救いの